Hello, hello. What's going on, guys? All right, here we are. All right, today we're going to go over some Code Academy Pro. Um, I reached out to Code Academy. Now, if you don't know what Code Academy is, it's basically a an online program that you can, <clears throat> or an online website that you can go to and um, learn coding. So they have Python. Here, let me jump into it real quick. Um, here we go. So this is Code Academy, and they have several different programming languages that they um, will teach. They got HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript, Java, C++, C Sharp, PHP, Go, Swift, whatever that is. Um, all kinds of courses that you can take. Um, so I reached out to Code Academy and told them that. Um, I really want to build a YouTube channel and do some streaming and show you guys the stuff. And I actually want to go through the courses. And they were kind enough to say, yeah, that's, that's not a problem at all. Um, go ahead. Um, you can record videos. You can stream it. Whatever you want to do. Um, so that was really awesome. It, it really shows that the company is out there to, to help people learn and not just make, make some money off of it. Um, so what I'm really interested in is some full stack engineering. Um, so full stack engineer, for the, those of you that don't know, it's web development, front end and back end. So back end being databases and stuff like that. Um, and the front end, mainly what you see. Um, so how, how things are interacting on the page that you see. So I've started this course a while ago and I didn't make it very far. So I've, I've kind of gone through some of the introduction parts of it. Um, so far, so good, but I wanted to restart it completely because, like I said, I hardly made it through any of it. Um, but I wanted to make start from the beginning and document everything that I'm doing. So with Code Academy, you can go get the pro version. I'm not quite sure how much it is. Um, but so far from what I've seen, it's definitely worth it. So I guess you get a little background about me. Um, software development students um, graduate in May of next year, and I'm really interested in going into web development. So I've spent a little bit of time learning about it, um, but I'm really diving into it now. So when I graduate, I have a nice portfolio and I have some experience um, along with my degree. Um, some of the books that Pro Academy uses for these courses are these two books here um, so we got HTML CSS and we got the JavaScript and jQuery so you don't have to buy these books but I sure like to have the books on hand and be able to have a physical form of them to read through them versus just reading through them on here but let's go ahead and, and jump into this here so we got the full stack engineer um, so this includes JavaScript Node.js, SQL, Express.js, React so experience so this is a beginner's course um, for those who want to learn front-end and back-end build and style interactive sites and communicate with web developers so once you complete this you get a little certificate of completion probably doesn't do much for you but no, well, most likely it doesn't do anything for you, but um, the certificate is not what we're after. We're after the knowledge. So here's some more that we're going to get into, what you'll learn. Welcome to the full stack of your pad. Get started. Uh, it's not really too much there. All right, so we've already subscribed to Code Academy. Um, did month three, so we're going to say get started. We're going to go real slow, it looks like, too. All right, so here we go. Welcome to the full stack engineer path. So here's some of our learning objectives. Set up your own dev environment, version control. Um, so get in GitHub, create static, responsive websites with HTML, CSS. Um, all right, okay, so cool. So we're going to get some projects with it. We're gonna build a Node.js console app that generates random messages each time a user runs a program and version your project. 
with Git or GitHub. Well, Git, GitHub, there we go. So then it's also one of our projects, oh, that's cool. It's gonna be a personal project <clears throat> portfolio. So that'll be really nice because that's kind of what I'm, I'm wanting to accomplish by the end of May. I wanna have enough knowledge and a portfolio to, uh, to land my first web development job. So we're gonna do a Reddit client. We're gonna use JavaScript React. This is what I'm really after too is this React and the Reddit API, build an online forum containing real life data. Okay, that's pretty neat. Another project is e-commerce over the course of the two parts, build a full stack web app where users can purchase, cool, cool. Um, all right, so we'll hit this next over here. Okay, so it does this, we'll start next info. Oh, here we go, five days left to meet your target goal. All right, so, I guess I uh, went into my settings and set my goal for six days a week. I think I can meet that. Okay, some helpful resources. Popular developer resources, so MDN Web Docs, uh, W3, We3 School, right? Um, Stack Overflow. Okay, so recommended books. Um, here's these books right here that I actually talked about earlier. I'm right here sitting on my desk. I've read through all of the HTML and CSS. Awesome book. It, it breaks everything down so clearly. Sometimes when you're reading online, you're reading the documentation, it's just just kind of mind-numbing. Um, how these books break it down, it's almost like Barney style. Um, it, everything is just so clear. They have little pictures and diagrams, and there's no fluff to it. It's like, hey, this does this. Yeah, that's it. All right. And then the JavaScript one, I'm about halfway through with that one. Same exact thing. It's by the same author. Definitely recommend those books. Um, all, yeah, you can just go to Amazon and find them there, I believe. I think I got both of them for like 30 or $40. So they're pretty cheap. All right, start next info. I don't know what it is about this mic, but I just want to like rest my head on it. Community resources. Okay, okay. Let's get to the coding. That's what I'm... Uh, I'm wanting to get into here. Uh, goals of this unit, okay. After this unit, we'll be able to define what programming is, understand what a software engineer does in their job, the difference between front-end and back-end engineering, okay. So here we go, so what is programming? So I'm not really gonna go through this. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this because I'm familiar with all this. If you guys are not and you're going through this, I would definitely take the, the five to 10 minutes or it takes to read through all this. I'm also gonna skip the videos. Um, they're good videos, but I'm, I'm not interested in learning. I just wanna get to the coding, right? The coding. Come on, how many times are we gonna hit next? Uh, six. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, review, getting started. Yep, yep, yep. We got that. Yep, start next info. Holy cannoli. Um, all right, so this is gonna be our first unit, it looks like. Uh, introduction to JavaScript syntax part one. All right, I like this. So understand how JavaScript is used for web development. Understand introductory JavaScript. Oof, that's a... It understand introductory JavaScript syntax and practice JavaScript syntax. Okay, let's get into this here. Start next article. I could probably just go back to the syllabus and uh, click on where the first bit is, but okay. So all the cool kids are doing it. So learn JavaScript if you wanna be cool. Um, okay, ES6 and before. Okay, so those are just the uh, versions of JavaScript. Okay, again, here's these books. And like I said, you don't have to buy them. You can just, Code Academy will say, hey, this is the suggested reading from this book. Click read now. And if you click read now, I believe it just takes you to that um, part of the book and you can read it. All right. But like 
I said, it's so much better to have the book in hand than try to read it on screen, for me at least. All right, MDN. Again, if you're new to this programming, um, definitely bookmark MDN. Some more documentation. I think we're close. I think we're close. All right, so that's how you can go to MDN websites. Looks good, looks good. Okay, here we go. So this is the start of Codecademy full stack engineer course. Let's just go ahead and dive into it, okay? Um, I don't think I'm gonna read every single thing on here. I'll just give a quick rundown of what I know. And then if I don't know something, obviously I'm gonna go into it and read a little bit more. And hopefully me recording this and documenting my, uh, my adventure in learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, um, you'll be able to see where I get stuck and hopefully you'll be able to see where I get unstuck and it'll help you out. Let's, let's go ahead and go to this. Okay, so the first thing is console. So the console is a panel that displays important messages like errors for developers. Much of the work computer does with our code is visible. Okay, so this will give us a brief what's going on and then it wants our instructions down here, okay. So it just says use a console.log code in the editor to log your age to the console. Okay, so I'm gonna say console.log and we'll do, I think I'm 32 now actually, nice and old. All right, so then we'll hit run. All right, so then it gives us a check mark when it's done. So all we're saying is, hey, log this in the console. Okay, so this part right here, this black screen, is our console. So anything that we type into our console will be displayed on our console. Imagine that, so if I wanted to say like, hey, I'm a, I'm actually 25 in the glory years. I'll hit run and it'll drop up 25 there. And we're gonna leave 25 there. All right, so once this first one's done, it's gonna go down to the second one. Obviously I got it wrong because I put 25. It says on the next line, write another console.log to print out a different number representing the number of weeks you've been programming. All right, so we'll do another one. All right, so number of weeks you've been programming. Um, ooh, that's a tough one. I'd say probably, I'm gonna go with like 12. I'm gonna say 12, and that's about three months. Um, it's really been on and off over <clears throat> a few years. Uh, this is just going personal time, right? This isn't uh, including school and stuff like that, but it's really not much longer if I include school. Either way, we're gonna just put 12 in, okay? And we'll run it from there. All right, so we got everything right. We'll go on to the next one here. <clears throat> okay, let's practice adding some code comments. So that's what this is talking about. So comments. So comments are just um, where you can put some comments in to remind yourself. So anything that is in a comment, it actually won't be, won't be ran. It won't even be read by the computer or the program. It's just gonna say, like say, you can do this. This is a comment or moments, I guess. Here we go. And that will just be left out. You can also comment out code, right? So if I wanted to say console.log, 25 again, right? And when I run this, all this stuff's gonna come up. But if I were to comment this out like so, it won't be there anymore in the console. But let's get rid of this. I'm sure it's probably just is gonna go over. Okay. Programming is often highly collaborative. In addition, your own code can become quickly difficult. Okay. These are the two types of codes, code comments in JavaScript. So we have a single line comment. We'll comment out a single line and it denoted with the forward slashes. Cool. So just like this, um, okay. A multi-line comment is, so we can do this all. 
and it's just going to be slash asterisk slash okay you can also use the syntax to comment out something out in the middle of the line of code i don't know if you guys can see my my dog back there just got to that dog bed a little bit ago and she is loving me this morning because you can see here she is she's loving it a little corgi it's a good dog all right back to work let's practice adding some code comments to the right we've brought it with you the beginning of the book catch 22 by joseph heller on line one write a single line comment that says opening line okay write a single line comment that says opening line okay so we have to comment right so we're gonna say opening line period and we'll hit run great so like i said this opening line is nowhere on the console because it's a comment and everything else is here and it's also not in the console log here we go single line comments are great for adding context to your code multi-line comments are best suited to prevent a block of code from running however both types of comments can be used for either purpose using multi-line comments at the bottom six console.log statements are all commented out so we got one two three four five six okay cool so what we can do with this right um it gives us that one there but we also need a, to end it to close it so we'll do that old number there we'll hit run fantastic we're just moving right along we're gonna be web developers yet you know what i'm saying okay data types okay this is important data types are the classifications we give to the different kinds of data 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 we're gonna say it both okay that we use in programming in javascript there are seven fundamental data types so we've got the number so any number including numbers with decimals okay string any grouping of characters on your keyboard letters numbers spaces symbols surrounded by single quotes okay or double quotes gotcha boolean okay boolean is true or false without quotes so this is important right here it's helpful to think of booleans as on and off switches or as the answers to a yes or no question noel let me get some uh some mountain dew here Ooh, it's the lifeblood of coders i don't know if that's true but all right so noel <clears throat> this data type represents the international nope intentional absence of a value and is represented by the keyword null okay undefined um cool symbol a newer feature to the language symbols are unique identifiers cool object collections of the okay cool um what does it want us to do on line one log the string javascript to the console so we're gonna say console.log and we're gonna hit this <clears throat> so it's a string that's a data type right so since it's a data type we have to use single quotes or double quotes there we go we'll hit run get a nice check there now it's gonna say online two log the number 2011 so we're just gonna do uh it's, yeah, yeah yeah we're just gonna do a little bit of i guess we're not going to um control copy control paste and this one wants to say online two log the number 2011 okay so since this is a number we do not need quotes okay oh all good so far all right we're gonna do one more copy here <clears throat> excuse me guys i got a little i don't know what's in my throat okay on line three print woohoo i love the code at code academy okay we're just gonna copy and paste this right and again, this is a string, right? That's why it has the single quotes there. We can just copy it into here and throw it there. Okay, you want to copy the quotes? We can throw those in real fast. I don't like how it does that. It's helpful when you're not copying and pasting, but not so much helpful when you are doing what I just did. 
On line four, print the number 20.49. Okay, so... Number 20.49. I gotta lose this nice color. You know what I really else like about uh, Codecademy? Is you don't have to download anything else. You know, the everything is in is right here. All right, it gives us our instructions. Gives us, I believe it's called an IDE, and it gives us our console right here. So you don't have to get any third party stuff, which is great. All right, next. So here we go. We got arithmetic operators. So basic arithmetic often comes in handy when programming. An operator is a character that performs a task in our code. JavaScript has several built-in arithmetic operators that allow us to perform mathematical calculations of numbers. These include the following operators and their corresponding symbols. All right, so we got add, subtract, multiply, divide, remainder. Okay, the first work, how you might guess. Yep, three plus four, maybe, cool. Note that we console.log, the computer, will evaluate the expression inside the parentheses and, okay, so that's cool and expected. <laughs> so if we console.log log this, it's gonna print out seven, it's not gonna say three plus four. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the remainder here though. If we wanted to print characters three plus four, we'd wrap them in quotes, okay. The remainder operator, sometimes called, <laughs> all I can think of is Modelo, the beer. Uh, sure. Modulo returns the number that remains after the right hand number divides into the left hand number as many times as it is as it evenly can. 11 divided by 3 equals 2 because 3 fits into 11 3 times, leaving the remainder as 2. Okay, gotcha. Inside of console.log, add 3.5 to your age. Okay, so we'll do console.log. We'll hit it with this. We'll do 32 plus. We're going to keep it nice and spaced out, right? Because we are going to be professionals. Okay, cool. On a new line, write another console.log. Inside the parentheses, take your current year. Take the current year and subtract 1969. Okay, we're just going to do a little bit of copy and paste in here. And we're going to take the current year. Current year is 2021. Yes, I looked at that. Why? I have no idea. All right, so we're going to take that there. Hot dog. All right, so we're going to create another one. Oh, man, I got the Mountain Dew burp. Sorry, create another console.log inside the parentheses. Divide 65 by 240. Okay. <clears throat> Look at that. And it gives us crazy amount of decimals, huh? Create one last console dog and inside the parentheses multiply. Okay, okay, okay. So we're gonna multiply 0 0.2708 times 100. Easy, easy, easy. Cool. And we're just flying through this. This is all pretty, uh, some basic stuff. I am familiar with all of this before and I have gone through this this portion of it at least. Um, if you're not, it's really important to understand the data types. That can really screw you up. Okay, string concatenation. Operators aren't just for numbers. When a plus operator is used on two strings, it appends the right string to the left string. Okay, so string concatenation. So we got console.log, we got high plus yeah, prints high. Hiya. Okay. So notice that there's no spaces in there. If you would have, if you wanted a space, you'd have to have a space there. Um, here we go. Instruction instructions inside of console.log. Nah, too many things going on. It's console.log. Concatenate the two strings, hello and world. Okay. So the first one's going to be hello. And we're gonna hit it with the old plus sign, world, capitalized too, right? <clears throat> and hit 
run. Hello world. Great. We left out the space last time. Create a second console log in which you concatenate the strings hello and world. But this time, make sure you include a space. All right, so this is just like I was saying before. We go in here, we hit that, and we can really do a hello world after this or before this. Or you can actually, you know, you could probably do too is just add a space, but I'm not gonna do that. You could probably do something like this, right? Um, you have to do another concatenation though, but you have to do that and then you have to add space and then you have to do another one of these and then do it in. That's kind of silly, right? Let's just do, uh, let's do that, right? Hit run and then we have a nice space there. Okay, wait, next, properties. When you introduce a new piece of data into a JavaScript program, these browser saves it as an instance of the data type. Okay, every string instance has a property called length that stores the number of characters in that string. You can retrieve property information by appending the string with a period and the property name. Okay, so inside console.log we're just giving it length. That length property is telling us how many characters are in this string. Okay. The blank is another operator. The blank, the period, the decimal, the dot is another operator, okay? We call it the dot, pro look at that. We call it the dot operator. In this example above, the value saved to the length property is retrieved from the instance of the string, hello, the program prints by blah, 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 okay. Use the length property to log the number of characters in the following string. Okay, so let's make sure we're not cheating here. Let's make sure we remember what we're doing. Um, we are going to cheat just a tad bit, though, okay? We're going to, that's not really cheating, right? That's just uh, using our resources. That's what I say in college, at least, right? Chig. You know, I'm just chigging, using my resources. Okay, so we hit length. Uh, that looks like how you spread it. Spread it, say it. Okay. Just avoid that one. Hit, mm, all right, good to go. Next. Methods. Okay. Remember that methods are actions we perform. So in the earlier reading, all of these um, all these properties, methods, operators, and all this stuff are gonna be in your JavaScript book right here, okay? So that's why it's saying remember because they expected you to read that earlier. So where was I? Okay, right here. We call or use these methods by applying an instance with a period dot operator, the name of the method, opening and closing the parentheses. Does that syntax look a little familiar? When you, when we console.log, okay, so we're saying here, oh, look at this. So this is a method, right? So I'm kind of confused. How is a method and a property different? Maybe because methods, I guess they're the same. Hmm. Let me know if you know the difference between methods and properties. What I'm thinking is they both use the dot operator. However, um, <laughs> methods are actions we can form. That's, that's what it is. Gotcha. Okay. So... To uppercase is saying whatever the string is, we're going to make it capitalize. Starts with H, prints true. Oh, okay. So that's going to get starts with is going to give us a Boolean. Remember that Boolean is true or false or yes or no. On the first lines, okay, so we got this. Use the to, dot to uppercase method to log the string code academy to the console in all capital letters. Okay, so we got it right here. We're gonna say, ooh, I think they just use camel casing, right? To uppercase. And let's hit that and see what we got. Um, what did I do wrong here? Oh, it says it right here. That's, yeah, okay. Silly me, right? No, don't do that. Come on now. There we 
go. So I forgot the parentheses after our method. So here we go. I did two uppercase code of vanity. Everything's there. In the second console.log, statement.app.js, we have a string remove white space, which has spaces before and after the words remove white space. If we browse the string documentation, we find several built-in string methods that each accomplish a different goal. The one method that seems ideal for us is trim. Use the method to remove white space at the beginning and end of the string in the second console.log. Okay, let's check out this documentation. All right, open up there for us. Oh, this is really cool. I like how um, it's linking us to actual documentation and not just its own resources. And it doesn't just link us to the method trim. It actually just links up, gives us to the string, and then probably gives us a whole bunch of, yes, everything that you can do with a string. That's very cool. So where would trim be? Right here. So what's trim under? I bet it's like something methods. Oh, hot dog, look at that. Okay, so all strings, all methods that you can apply to strings would be listed here. And we're gonna go to trim. And it's gonna take us to trim. And look at that, it even shows us how it works, okay? Look at, all right, cool. I really like how they do that. We'll close that out though. Okay, I should've probably left it open, but what I'm doing, we're gonna say trim. And I bet we have to do those again. So every time you have a method, you have to do these parentheses. Um, there we go. Look at that. Move that white space. Okay, built-in objects. In addition to console, there are objects built into JavaScript. Let's see what this takes. Us. Okay, cool. Indian again. Down the line, you'll build your own objects. But for now, these built-in objects are full of useful functionality. For example, if you wanted to perform more complex mathematical operations than arithmetic, JavaScript has the built-in math object. Okay. The great things, I should probably read that again. JavaScript has a built-in math object. Okay, math object, gotcha. The great thing about object is that they have methods. Let's call the dot random method from the built-in math object. Cool, cool. So we're saying console.log math.random prints a random number between zero and one. Let's uh, try that out. I wonder if we can just, I bet we can't. Oh, the only thing about that is I'm gonna get a big old fat X, but it's okay. We're not gonna try it out because I don't want an X. In the example above, we called dot random method by appending the object with the dot operator. The name of the method and opening and closing parentheses. This method returns a random number between zero and one. To generate a random number between zero and 50, we can multiply this number by 50. Okay. That makes sense. So math.random only generates a value between zero and one. In order to have it generate a number through one through 50 or zero through 50, you have to multiply it by 50. Same thing if you wanted to generate a number one through 100, you'd multiply it by 100. The example will likely evaluate to a decimal to ensure, okay, so it's decimal numbers as well. So it can be 0 0.1, or it can be 0 0.9999999. To ensure the answer is a whole number, we can take advantage of another useful math method called math.floor. Math.floor takes a decimal number and rounds down to the nearest whole number. You can use math.floor to round down a random number like this. Okay. So math.floor, not math.random times 50. Okay, did we do that? It's kind of weird how this 50, I would expect that 50 to be outside of this parenthesis. No, that's not true. This is exactly how we want it. Yeah, I was looking at this one. So this is the, how this is gonna work is this is gonna run first. Okay, because it's inside, it's, it's like a, like a shell, like whatever's in the most inside of the shell gets executed first. And then as you work your way out, 
that's how the code gets executed. So math.random times 50 would run, and then math.4 would run. I believe that's how it works. Math.random generates a random number between 0 and 1. We then multiply the number by 50. Okay. Then, yep. So this is uh, how it's uh, being executed. So from inside out, basically. <clears throat> Having another drink of water. I'm going to go with water this time instead of some dew. Yeah. I like to offset my uh, dehydration with hydration. It's pretty simple. That's the stuff. That is the stuff. <clears throat> Get a nice stretch here. Okay. Uh, we all got this. We're freaking geniuses. Inside the console.log, create a random number with math.random. Get rid of my stash. Okay. Inside of the console.log. All right, let's hit that first. I like to do my, you know, my semicolon there. Create a random number with math.random, then multiply. Okay, so we're going to do math.random. And it wants us to multiply it by 100. Run. Oh, really? 94? That's hot dog, man. That's a pretty high one off at the top, huh? Off the top, off the bat. Okay. Now use math.floor. Getting text messages and it's distracting me. I'll just turn my phone over. You know, there we go. Do not disturb. Now use math.floor to make a to make the output a whole number. Inside the console auger, you write the I don't know. I don't know what's coming out of my mouth right now. <clears throat> All right. Inside the console.log, you wrote in the last step. Put the existing math.random times 100 code. Inside the parentheses of math.floor. Okay. I'm saying okay, but I don't know what I just read. Inside the console.log, you wrote in the last step, put the existing math.random times 100 code inside the parentheses of math.floor. All right. So we're going to do math.floor. We go all the way over here. We hit that. We hit run. Now it's going to give us a whole number. One. One. Okay. It's like, man. I was kind of nervous when it gave me a one because I was like, well, I multiplied by 100. That's pretty low, right? We, the first number was 94, and then we got a one. Yeah, okay. All right. So find a method on JavaScript math object that returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to a decimal. Use this method with the number 43.8. Log the answer to the console. Okay, so it wants us to go to this MDN here. We're gonna open it up in a new page. And we want it one that returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to a decimal number. Okay, so our decimal number is 43.8. So we wanna look for an integer. Um, instead of method, right? So we're gonna go Find a method. Holy cow, look at all these methods. Um, I'm going to search for one that has integer on here. If there's one that has this, or we're going to get some control F going on. Yeah, all right, so let's get some uh, control F going on. We're going to hit integer. Returns the smallest integer greater than, or, is that what we wanted? Um, the smallest integer greater than or equal to a decimal number. That's equal to x. Does that work? I bet it does. We're gonna think of that. Okay, math dot seal returns the number leading. No, we don't want that. No. 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 Mm, all right, I'm gonna go with uh, math dot seal. We'll see if it's what it says. Okay. So find a method, yeah, we did it. Use the method with number dot. Okay, so we're gonna say console. I really like how it takes us to documentation. I know I said this before, but I like how it takes us to documentation and then makes us search inside of that documentation to find what we're looking for. 
um, that's really cool. So I, I, I just need to, all right, so it was math dot seal, like ceiling, is that what that is? C-E-I-L, okay, and since it's a method, we gotta add these, and then it wants us to do it for 43.8, so let's figure out what this is gonna happen, or what's this gonna do when we run it. Um, find a method that returns the smallest integer greater than or equal, yes, I have no idea. 44. Oh, I see. So it's going to be the smallest number, the smallest integer, right? Um, that is closest to this or equal. Oh my goodness, equal to it. So if we did 45.8, I'm going to guess 46 is going to be returned. I may be the smartest freaking man alive. 49.8, let's do it again. 50. Whoo! Hot dog. Oh, all right. I got another X. Use JavaScript. Oh, another one? I shouldn't sigh about it. I just complimented it. But here we are again. Use the JavaScript documentation to find a method on the built-in number object that checks if a number is an integer. Put the number 2017 in the parentheses of the method and use console.log to print the result. Okay. You guys ever just read something and the words coming out of your mouth but you have no idea what you just read not because you can't understand it but your brain just kind of I don't know goes into cruise control and just so I'm gonna read this probably three more times use the JavaScript documentation okay we're gonna open up there to find a method on the built-in number object that checks if a number is an integer Okay, so we're just trying to see if the number is an integer. So again, we're gonna go to methods, right? I'm gonna control F this again, and I'm gonna do integer one more time. It has to be a method, right? Some static methods. Determine whether value pass, nope. Determine whether the pass value is an integer. Here we go. So, number is integer. So any side, anything besides any, my lancet, anything inside these parentheses, it will. This method will tell if it's an integer or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste this. I think that'll be, that'll be easy. So we're gonna do console dot log. Hit it with that. And then we're gonna hit it with that again. We're gonna hit with one of them. And what number does it want to put in? Put the number 2017. All right, what do you guys think? Is it an integer or is it not? I'm going to guess yes. True. Okay. So that one passes out Boolean. So true or false? Yes or no? Good. All right. So this is just a quick review. Let's take one more glance at the concepts we just learned. Cool, cool. So let's go over this real quick, what we learned. We learned that data is printed or logged to the to the console, a panel that displays messages with console.log. We can write single line comments with forward slash, backslash, slash, and multi-line comments with, yep. Um, there are seven fundamental types in JavaScript, strings, Numbers, booleans, null, undefined, symbol, and object. Object, yes. Numbers are any number without quotes. So it's kind of important. Sometimes you have to, if it was a decimal, it'd be like a flex um, or a float, I mean. So here in JavaScript, it doesn't matter. A number is a number with decimal or no decimal. Strings are characters wrapped in a single quote or double quotes. The dog's waking up a little bit. All right, she's back to sleep. Never mind. Built in arithmetic operators include plus, minus. Yep. Objects including instances of data types can have properties stored information. The properties are denoted with a dot after the name. 
Okay, this is kind of what I want to read again. Because remember, I was... I was a little confused by properties and methods. So if anybody knows and can clarify that for me, that'd be great. So the properties are denoted with a dot operator. After the name of the object, for example, hello dot length. Okay. Objects including instances of data types can have methods which perform actions. Methods are called by appending the object or instance with a period dot operator, the method name and the parentheses for example. Okay, we can access properties and methods by using the dot operator. Gotcha, built in objects including, okay, cool, we got that. All right, so we just finished that one. We're 10 out of 10. I'm feeling really damn good. Now it wants to start the next lesson. It's gonna go into variables. I think I'm gonna save that one for tomorrow. But so far today, we went over the introduction to JavaScript and I think it went pretty dang good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat below. Um, so tomorrow again, I'll jump on. Tomorrow I should be able to be live streaming. So first I'll live stream on YouTube and then I'll upload the video for that. Um, so we're gonna go over variables tomorrow. Today we went over the introduction to JavaScript. Let's check out this syllabus and see what we're gonna cover. Holy cow, we got 1% done though. What it is, boys. Okay. We got a, okay. So we got a quiz coming up. We got external resources again. So that's a JavaScript and jQuery book again. And then, oh, it gives us some projects right away. Okay. Very cool. Let's see what our, where do we see the entire, Um, here we go. So this is the entire syllabus. Hot dogs. So let's break this down real quick. Go over it real fast to see what we get out of this course. So we get the JavaScript syntax part one. Um, let's gonna break that down more. Then we're gonna go in with conditional statements, and then functions, scope. Variables, data types, conditionals, and functions again. Number guesser. And then we're going to do a review. And then we're going to jump into JavaScript syntax part two. Arrays, loops, objects. Okay. Um, then setting up your dev environment. Okay, so I'll just go to the text editors. How are we going to run JavaScript? That's going to be useful. Then Git and GitHub. Oh, that's extremely useful. I've used Git um, only a handful of times. Definitely a lot more comfortable with it now than I was when I first started. When I fr it was almost kind of overwhelming when I first started. I was it, it took a lot to to understand it. It's really easy though. Like don't don't let it scare you. All right, JavaScript syntax, web development fundamentals. Okay, some of this. I really, I really just want to get into coding. So I'm going to kind of probably bypass most of this and then just jump into the HTML, CSS, and then bring your site online. So we're gonna do some wireframing. That's really cool. Um, web hosting, cool, cool. All right, we're gonna get a little more in depth on CSS and then some Building interactive websites with JavaScript. Awesome. Okay, so we don't start using the DOM until way down here. Okay, so first it wants us to learn all the syntax. That makes sense. Making it website accessible. That's cool. Personal project, excuse me, personal portfolio websites. Awesome. So we're gonna start our portfolio, bring together what you've learned in the previous lessons and build a project off of Code Academy. Okay. 
Then we're going to go into JavaScript, JavaScript syntax part three. I kind of like how it breaks it up. Um, so it's not just three parts of JavaScript, one after another. Sometimes I need a little break. And I think this is going to give me that break. Um, so let's some paired programming. You can learn on your own, but you can learn even more when you collaborate with others. Well, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know how they have that set up. Okay, we're going to learn some classes. We're going to review test driven development with JavaScript. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that is. I have no idea what TDD stands for. Well, what it is. It stands for test driven development, obviously. Here we go. That's what I want. I am ready to learn some React. Obviously, I gotta learn a lot of JavaScript, but I'm ready for J React as well. So we get two parts of React. Awesome. And quite a, oh, we get some Redux too. Cool. But here we go again with Git and GitHub. Awesome. We get a React and Redux um, portfolio project. And then we get some basics of back end development. So what are we going to use in back end? Node and Express JS. Okay. Okay, just some API stuff. Back end and feature testing. Okay. SQL for back end development. Awesome. I've done some MySQL, um, quite a bit of it actually in my software development degree. It's pretty straightforward, I believe, from what I've learned. Um, I've had to make some databases and do some querying with MySQL. It seemed all right. Designing relational data. Okay. I'm pretty familiar with relational databases. I can't say I'm extremely familiar with designing them. I have, I've built a few. Advanced, I have no idea what that is. Um, but we'll, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn. Where is it? Maybe it'll say right here. Now, hopefully it gives us like, this is how you pronounce this word. Back end, adding a, yep, there it is again. Security authentic authentication and authorization. Good, good. Advanced concepts, full stack portfolio. Okay, so another project it looks like, right? Yep. Okay, so this is kind of cool. What to expect in a technical interview. Um, linear data structures, complex data structures, algorithms, search, graph interview skills, final portfolio project okay all right so I'm gonna be honest I am really looking forward to all of the coding I am NOT looking forward to the other informational stuff it's just not I think I know enough of it I'm not really eager to learn that it might be useful we'll see but I really just want to get into the coding all right, guys. Well, tomorrow I'm going to jump into the variables lessons, and we'll see how that goes. Sidetracked again. All right, guys. I will uh, catch you tomorrow. And again, I'm going to live stream on YouTube, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Catch you later. I just got to stay and talk about the stream because I'm recording it and I have to end the stream.